It's easy to assume that diverse animals socializing together is a phenomenon reserved for animated Disney films. However, the reality is that the animal kingdom is also home to some surprisingly unusual friendships. Here are the six most bizarre animal partnerships witnessed in nature. Number six, turkeys and deer. Turkeys and deer may seem like two unrelated animal species, but there is one thing that brings them together. Both are hunted by humans during certain times of the year. Though some people hunt them illegally, that's a topic for another day. The problem for these animals is that their usual survival methods don't work during hunting season. They end up having problems due to the persistence of hunters. So what do they do? They work together to avoid the hunters. There are many accounts of hunters and others who have witnessed deer and turkeys working together to avoid danger. Each animal brings its own skill to the table to ensure survival. Turkeys have great eyesight and can spot danger from afar. Meanwhile, the deer, usually a male buck, uses its strong sense of smell to detect danger and alerts its turkey allies. Witnesses say that if the turkeys notice something first and walk away, the deer follows. Similarly, if the deer smells danger and tries to escape, the turkeys follow. This unique union is a result of the most basic instinct, survival. Sometimes, one can survive best when not alone. Number 5. Larva and Ants The insect world has all kinds of relationships that are well documented, like the hierarchy mindset of places like beehives and ant colonies. But when it comes to butterflies and ants, you don't really hear tales of them working together at all. However, for a certain set of butterfly, they actually enlist a bunch of ants to help them, though it isn't a mutually beneficial thing as it sounds. Because at first, it's a relationship that is very much like the warthog and mongoose, the larva of the lichenid butterfly, is able to secrete a sap that's very tasty to ants, and so, by giving them this nectar, they stay around the larva and protect it from harm. A very symbiotic relationship, right? Well, almost, because the catch here is that the butterfly larva needs the ants to stay alive, and yet the ants could possibly go and get food anywhere else. So why stay around the larva at all? Well, the answer is they have no choice. No, really, I mean it. The nectar that's secreted has certain effects on the brains of the ants to the extent that they have their motor functions lowered so that they actually can't leave, but they still contain their aggressiveness so they can fight when it's needed. Yes, this is a butterfly larva that's literally drugs to ants so that it can be protected until it's a butterfly. It's also apparently emitting a smell that lures the ants so that it definitely gets its bodyguards, and you likely thought that all butterflies were nice, didn't you? Number 4. Vothog and Mongooses Now, I'll begin with two very different animals that don't seem like they'd make the best of friends, but surprisingly they are, to some extent at least. Vothog are bulky creatures that have tusks and can be quite dangerous when provoked. Interestingly, they were the inspiration for Pumba from The Lion King. Mongooses, on the other hand, are stealthy creatures and natural predators of snakes. So how do these two species get along? The answer is that Vothog need mongooses to remove bugs from their backs. This is a documented phenomenon that has been witnessed in wildlife parks and theoretically, can happen in the wild too. An example of this unique relationship occurred in Uganda's Queen Elizabeth National Park. Vothog would come across a group of mongooses, or is it mongees? The plural is unclear. Lie down and allow the mongooses to groom them. This would enable the mongooses to remove ticks, bugs, and other parasites from the Vothog backs, which truly plagued them. Although it may seem like a scene from a Disney movie, this relationship is real. The hope of a documentary called Banded Brothers was to get scientists to observe and study this relationship. Similar to many relationships in the animal kingdom, it's not just about being friends. One species provides a service to another. In this case, the mongooses remove bugs from the vothog, and in return, the mongooses are fed. Before we conclude, please consider liking this video, subscribing, and clicking on the notification bell. Thank you. Now it's time for the sweet topic. What you're about to witness is unusual, but it's also heartwarming. A tiger, a bear, and a lion were raised together and surprisingly, 
they're still the closest of friends. Meet Baloo the bear, Leo the lion, and Shere Khan the tiger. When they were cubs, they were kept in the home of a drug dealer who stole them. Unfortunately, their time with him was traumatic and terrible. However, they were eventually rescued and taken to an animal sanctuary where their lives improved dramatically. Today, they remain the best of friends. As always, please share your thoughts with us using the hashtag sweet topic in the comments section below. Number three, sunfish and seabirds. Fish and birds tend to have a rather one-sided relationship, especially when it comes to seabirds. Mainly in that birds like to eat fish and the fish that are near the surface of bodies of water tend to make for easy prey. Pickens, but what if I told you that when it comes to sunfish, AKA the mola mola fish and albatrosses, they actually help each other out. This would be witnessed by a group of fishermen in the northern seas of Japan, where a large school of mola mola sunfish was observed floating at the surface, a number of albatrosses in the water close at hand. Upon closer inspection, the team observed that these fish were carrying parasites called panella, a crustacean. The panella buries its head into the flesh of its victim, leaving a long egg strain hanging out. As the scientists watched, the fish would follow the birds, and the albatross would extract the parasite and then eat it. Other birds caught on, and a full-fledged sunfish cleaning would ensue. The sunfish were trying to attract the birds, swimming alongside them and exposing their sides to their winged helpers. Now if you're getting a deja vu kind of feeling, you're not alone. This is very much like the warthog, and the mongoose in that one has an unwanted visitor and the other has a need to eat. So, one got the other to help out. The only real question is how did the sunfish learn to do this trick? Nobody really knows, but nobody can deny that it works. Number two, iguanas, crabs, and sea lions. The Galapagos Islands are home to a diverse range of creatures that have interesting relationships with each other. One such relationship is called mutualism, where two organisms benefit from each other. For example, crabs eat ticks off the backs of sleeping lions, while lava lizards remove pesky flies from the masses of sunbathing marine iguanas. The marine iguanas rely on the smaller lava lizards to remove the flies as they are herbivores. This pairing shows how different animals can work together for the greater good. The Galapagos Islands are full of unique relationships between animals due to the variety of life that exists there. It's no wonder why so many people want to study and visit the islands to witness the fascinating interactions between the creatures. Number 1. Pearlfish and Sea Cucumber Believe it or not, this isn't a fabrication, even though it might sound like one of the most absurd and fantastical tales imaginable. It's genuinely true, and there's evidence to, to back it up. In the oceans around the world, particularly near Australia, there exists a fish known as the pearlfish. This creature is singularly focused on seeking refuge, as it makes its home inside other organisms. Indeed, it acts somewhat like a parasite, seeking shelter within hosts to evade predators. Interestingly, one of its chosen abodes is within sea cucumbers, which when you think about it, is quite clever. Sea cucumbers are biologically alive, yet exhibit minimal signs of life, making them unique hosts. However, the method of entry the pearlfish employs is rather unconventional. It enters its host through the anus. This fact is as true as it is bizarre. The fish is drawn to the sea cucumber by detecting expelled water and proceeds to enter through the rear, from where the water was released. And if you're imagining a one-to-one -one ratio of pearlfish to sea cucumber, think again. Sometimes, multiple pearlfish will share this, shall we say, intimate space. That's the extent of this peculiar fact. The natural world, as it turns out, can indeed be stranger and more bewildering than fiction. That's all for today's discussion on strange animal relationships. Were you surprised to learn that different kinds of animals can form relationships with each other, even if they are not within their species or likely to interact. Which of these combinations did you find the most intriguing? Please share your thoughts in the comments below. Additionally, make sure to check out the other interesting content displayed on the screen. Thank you for tuning in, and I look forward to seeing you next time.